Welcome to Nativity of Mary as we begin the three days of the sacred triduum with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Please silence all cell phones as we begin our liturgy. The entrance hymn can be found at number 545, We Glory in the Cross. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Tonight, the Church throughout the world gathers together to begin the sacred celebration of the Triduum. And of course, tonight we celebrate the beautiful moment when Christ gave to his Church the gift of the Eucharist and the Holy Priesthood. Gathered with those whom he loved the most in the upper room, he shared what was most precious to him, his very heart. And my brothers and sisters, as we gather together around this altar, knowing that the Lord desires to share his heart with us, let us begin by calling to mind our sins and so preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th day of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its, its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, but not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever is bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus always takes the lowest place. Jesus always takes the lowest place. Here on this beautiful evening mass of the Lord's Supper, this Holy Thursday night, that's this, that's this mystery that I, I want us to spend our time just sort of peacefully meditating on. That, that Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, 
the God who <laughs> created the entire universe chooses the way of humility, chooses to be lowly. You know, there are only two adjectives that Jesus uses to describe himself in all the Gospels, only two adjectives. I am meek and humble of heart. Jesus takes the lowest place. We hear it in three different ways here on Holy Thursday. The first is the washing of the disciples' feet. <laughs> it was a dirty job. It's, it's a job for the servant because they're wearing open-toed shoes, they're traveling through, you know, desert country, your feet get all kinds of grimy throughout the day. And Jesus, their teacher, their Lord, who they had already recognized and confessed as the Son of God, is now washing their feet. And, and he tells them, you know, you, you call me Master and Lord, and rightly so, but if I wash your feet, then, then what does that mean for the kingdom of God? What does the logic of the kingdom of God look like? It says that all authority, all power, all of that is oriented towards service, towards love. Like that which is higher is there to serve and to love the lower. That, that God is showing us that, that all authority, all influence, all power is always there for other people, to serve them. And we don't get a better picture of that than our Lord Jesus. That that's, that's how the logic of the kingdom of God and therefore how we ought to operate in the church. That, that the higher exists to serve and to love the lower. That I, I'm willing to take the lowest place because that's where Jesus goes. So it's this mystery of service is the first thing that we ponder, that we meditate in, on tonight. The second is the mystery of the Eucharist. You know, in, in the, the Last Supper, we see the Lord giving us two of the sacraments. You get a two-for-one special in this. And, and the first is the Eucharist. You know, he, he, he breaks the bread and, and he gives the wine and said, take this and eat, take this and drink. This is my body, this is my blood. And as Catholics, we believe that those weren't just words. <laughs> it, it's not just a nice metaphor. But, but we truly believe that Jesus makes himself present in the Eucharist. This isn't just some kind of memorial, although it is. This isn't just some kind of image, although it is. But it's Jesus' very presence coming to us in the humble, lowly little form of bread. That Jesus, because... He can no longer be with us because he has ascended to the Father. He still wanted to give us his very presence under the lowly form of bread, the bread that we receive at every Mass. That's not bread because it's the very presence of Jesus Christ. What humility that must be. Again, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of the entire universe chooses to make himself present in this little piece of bread. That's not even a piece of bread, it just looks like one. Only faith, only the embracing the lowly Christ can get you to that point. The mystery of service, the mystery of the Eucharist. And finally, the other sacrament that Christ institutes on Holy Thursday is the sacrament of the priesthood. That Jesus Christ, the high priest, chose to share his priesthood with some, with some of his followers. I, I, I've been thinking a lot about this, especially um, being 57 days away from ordination to the priesthood here. That, that Jesus would want to share his priesthood with me. And, and as I look back on on you know, all the, these years of formation and prayer and preparation. Um, you know, it, it's really tempting to, to talk about my strengths and all the reasons why, why I would make a good priest and I gotta make sure you know, the people in charge of me know that I'm, I'm doing well and I'm doing my homework and I'm, I'm studying well. And it, it's, it's good to you know, work on your strengths and be known in that. But it wasn't until about halfway through the process that 
The question really isn't, you know, are you good enough to be a priest? Are you strong enough to be a priest? It's an important question, but I don't think it's the most important. I think the most important, at least for me, has become, are you weak enough to be a priest? Are you lowly enough to be a priest? That, that do I let Jesus, who always takes the lowest place, do I let him find those lowly places in me? Or do I try and hide them? Do, do I let him see the, like the, the weak, the broken parts in me and love me in that place? You know, Jesus washing the feet of, of his disciples, one of those disciples would betray him several hours later. <laughs> Another one of those disciples would deny him three times. Like, the Lord's still choosing to meet them in their lowliness. And, and for St. Peter, you know, Christ meeting him there in mercy, in his lowest moment, where he denied Jesus three times. Like, how many times have I denied him? And how many times does he want to rush in to the places of my lowliness and my brokenness? And, and still say, like, I want to share my priesthood with you there. I want to share my very life with you there. And, and so it's, it's with, with a little bit of fear and trembling that, that I approach the sacrament of ordination. But time and again, Jesus just overwhelms me with meeting me in my low places. Because that's precisely where he wants to meet me. That's where he wants to meet you. And, and so that's the invitation for each and every one of us here on this Holy Thursday night. It, it, it's to let the Lord serve us, to, to let him go low. He, he, he chose to do it all those years before, and he chooses to do it again tonight and at every Mass. And in these, these sacred days of the Triduum, we, we see how much like, like the lowliness of Jesus is going to cost, right? We know what happens tomorrow. We know the cost of Jesus taking that all upon himself. But we also know the power of transformation. We also know the power of resurrection and redemption. And that, those, that same disciple who would later deny Jesus three times would become one of the greatest saints that ever lived. That the, the ordinary bread that, that is brought up here suddenly becomes like the greatest presence of God here on this earth. And that weak, broken men, weak, broken disciples get to share in the very life of Jesus as we learn to let him love us in our low places. That Christ, who did not despise the lowliness but embraced it, taught us how to love others. And so it's my dear hope and prayer that as we enter into these holy days, we see the humility of Christ and that we could see it transformed in power and in resurrection. Please remain seated if those who have been invited to have their feet washed today could come forward at this time.
Please stand. As we give thanks to God for the gift of the Eucharist, let us now offer him our prayers and petitions this evening. For church leaders, may the Lord continue to conform them evermore to his heart in humble service of love for his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for life throughout the world, from conception through natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechumens and candidates preparing to receive the Lord Jesus for the first time this Easter season, may Jesus increase their desire for him as their daily bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may the Holy Spirit help us to always be a Eucharistic people who share God's gift of life with the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith, may the mercy of our loving God usher them into the fullness of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Thomas Thole, for whom this Mass is offered, for the prayers in our parish book of intercessions, and for the prayers in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, it was you who sent us the gift of your Son, who told his dearest friends that he yearned earnestly to celebrate this feast with them. May we too receive that call to gather at this supper to receive the graces that he has awaiting for us. May he hear and answer the petitions of our hearts, for we offer all of these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be de defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, 
Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal salvation and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased, O Lord, to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in peace, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of very brief announcements. We will soon process through the whole church with the Blessed Sacrament. Please kneel as the Blessed Sacrament begins to pass. As we exit out the center aisle, we'll do a whole loop around the church and then go out to the center. We invite you to join us in the gathering space at the altar of repose. The Blessed Sacrament will be there to spend time with our Lord in the garden until 10 p.m. tonight. We would ask you to please maintain a reverent silence as you leave this evening and refrain from talking until you exit the building. There will be no formal blessing ending this liturgy but rather the procession out is in fact its conclusion to symbolize Christ leaving the upper room to go with his disciples to the garden. A reminder that there is no daily mass tomorrow morning, but Good Friday liturgy will begin with the passion of our Lord at 3 p.m. and stations at 7 p.m.